Will it be do or die time for any teams this week in the Premiership? Just three games to go, so maybe. I'm going to be looking at this week's fixtures in detail and give you my predictions. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be with you throughout the end of the Premiership season and well beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, the current state of play, the current standings with the top three all winning last week, getting ever closer to semi-final qualification. That's Northampton, that's Bath, that's Saracens, but it's still very, very, very close. Just five points separate third all the way through to six. Exeter and Leicester in seventh and eighth. They're probably getting towards that last chance saloon now with every game becoming a bit of a cup final. OK, let's start with the first fixture this weekend, and it is probably the real big one as well. This is Bath versus Saracens. It's on Friday night at the Rec. Bath in second, Saracens in third. You know, this is a shootout for a home semi-final, really. You really want to get one of these... Um, over on the opposition when you get the chance. Bath off a great bonus point win last week down in Exeter. Not a really fluent performance, but they got the job done and got the points. And they picked a very similar team this week with just Niall Annett coming in for Tom Dunn at hooker. And also, quietly, Cam Redpath is back fit and he's been picked on the bench. Saracens have changed their entire front row from last week. Uh, in their absolute romp over Gloucester, second 15. Uh, Eroni Maui, Jamie George and Christian Judge come back in and Itoje is joined by Nick Izikwe in the second row with Theo McFarland missing out altogether. Uh, Elliot Daly's back at fullback and also a very important one as well. He's a key player, I think, for Saracens and that's Ivan Van Zyl is back and he's on the bench to join Binny Vulapola who is continuing to be out of uh, touch here in the selection game. This is an interesting one for me. Like I said last week, he's historically been so trusted by Saracens, particularly when you get to the uh, business end of the season. I wonder if this is just firing him up so that he has a huge finale. Who knows? Anyway, the home semi-finals are very, very important. And Saracens, you know, incredibly difficult to beat at home. So I think they really are going to try and get this one over the line against Bath, who are ahead of them in the table currently. But I just don't think Saracens are quite as ominous as they have been in recent years. I think Bath are proving to be really consistent performance, and I think they'll take it. I'm going to go with Bath, but I think it's going to be really tight one, this. OK, Leicester versus Bristol, and this is on Saturday afternoon. Tigers in eighth against Bears, who are in fourth. Tigers are missing Solomon Akata after his red card last week in the East Midlands derby. Now, he's been suspended for two games, one of which is going to be against Black Lion, the Georgian team, who are coached by former Tiger Richard Cockrell. I'm not sure exactly when that game was uh, arranged, but interesting timing nonetheless. There's no selection news. I haven't seen that yet at time of recording. But Leicester really need to win this now. I really think their their games are are shootout. Their every game's a cut final for them, and they've got Sale and Exeter to go. Both teams who are round about the same place as them in the table, so they're going to need to win and keep winning. Bears absolutely rampant last week against Newcastle, a pretty weak Newcastle side even for this season. Uh, but they've got some serious games to finish this year against Saracens and Quinns after this week. Again, no selection news for the Bears at time of recording. But it's just an incredible clash of styles. Uh, although Leicester have been playing a bit more recently. What will be interesting to see for me in a game like this, Bristol away from home, will they just continue to do what they did last week? Will Leicester therefore find it easier to defend against because they know what's coming? Or will Bristol set some little traps and sort of look like they're going to run and maybe use some short kicking game? This will be a really interesting one for me. And Bristol have been on such a streak, but that can't last forever. And I think they'll lose before the end of the regular season. And I think it's going to be this week. I'm going to go with Tigers. They need it desperately. And it's going to be by two scores. Also on Saturday, Harlequins versus Northampton in the big summer kickoff at Twickenham. We've got Quinns in fifth against Saints in first place and storming the regular season, frankly. 
Quinn's off of two bonus points last week at Sale, but Quinn's were off it. Like they did really well, I think, to get those two bonus points. You know, they played some. They did play some really good rugby, but it was patchy, really patchy. They've got Exeter and Bristol to go, Quinn's. So, in fifth place, they really need to stay on top of this and keep picking up wins if they can. Northampton, uh, with Courtney Lords, is going to be inducted into the RPA Hall of Fame. It was announced this week. Well done, Courtney. Well deserved. And they are pretty much there, I think, in terms of semi-final qualification. But how good would it be for them to get a home semi-final pretty much secured before going back into Europe? Imagine what that will just release for them in terms of the end of the season, in terms of pressure. Uh, It would be a big one for Saints, I think, if they could get that win this week. But Quinns do well in these big games at Twickenham. They tend to perform well. They tend to get the wins. But Saints just seem to be so resilient to me at the moment as well. Their performance levels, even though you know they picked a slightly uh, uh, second-choice side in some areas last week against Tigers, they still managed to keep the performance levels really high, which just talks to like a really balanced and um, a squad that just knows what it's doing, very comfortable in their own skin. And I think this one really could go either way. Uh, but I am going to go with Saints in a high-scoring thriller to continue their streak. On Sunday, we move to the slightly uh, less exciting games. Frankly, we've got Gloucester versus Exeter. Gloucester and Knight out of it. They got humped. Well, their second team got humped at Saris last week, and they got a European semi-final next week. So how much will they really care? It's a West Country derby, but, you know, who knows? Chiefs in seventh. They probably overachieved this season. They're ahead of where they thought they would be, I think, on this rebuild that Rob Batts has taken them through and I don't see them making mounting a real challenge for the title this year I think that'll be beyond them Chiefs have got Quinns and Tigers to go though uh you know teams again around them in the table so if they're going to get up into a semi-final place and I do think they have to win this week and I think they will uh but it, it might I feel like this one might be a bit of a scrappy affair and uh, Chiefs will just have enough desire to see it through. Newcastle versus Sale on Sunday. Also, Falcons obviously in 10th. Got crucified last week. Haven't had a win all season. Can they park that absolutely enormous defeat? 85 points they conceded. However, I think Steve Diamond might have not thrown that game. But he wants a win. He's desperate to get a win to give the club something to build off of of this season. And against Sale, can you think of a club that he would want to win it more against? I can't, really. Sale in sixth. They've got Tigers and Saris to go again. Clubs near them in the table. It's that kind of season where, you know, these are always head-to-heads. And I do think they have the firepower to compete for the title but they're not really hitting their straps at the moment. They're, they're showing it in, in bursts, little bits here and there, but it looks a little bit, you know, just a little bit bitty. But it does, again, it feels like another must-win game for sale. But what about that Steve Diamond factor that I talked about earlier? If Newcastle won this and derailed sales, semi-final chances, my word. And you know he can do that. You know he can generate a performance in a group of men from somewhere. We've seen it so many times before. But for me... Sale will be too good, but I think they'll probably make quite hard work of it. Okay, those are my week 16 predictions. And again, if these all come through, then the table's going to look even more tight, aside from Saints, who are flying clear at the top. Either way, and whatever happens, it's still got some amazing games to come and a very exciting end to the season. But what do you think? Which predictions do you agree with? Which do you disagree with? Any factors that you think will play a key role, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.